Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here at Brick Fair Virginia, and today we're taking a look at the massive underwater Charm City collab project here. I've got one of the organizers of the project with me, so if you want to introduce yourself, and then we can take a look at this. Sure, I'm Vanessa. Um, I helped uh, organize and put together our underwater collaboration um, for Charm City Lug. So this is a huge layout here. How many people were involved in this whole thing? About 20 participants um, contributed a display, a portion of the display, and as you can see, all, all laid out here. And there's a variety of different approaches and kind of types of building that we'll see here, so we'll kind of start at just the, the left end and kind of make our way down. Right off the bat, we've got a very unique part here. What is happening in this section? Uh, part of the theme is sort of mermaid uh, interpretation, so everyone took their own underwater take of maybe mermaids live there, maybe they don't. Here we see a rock concert happening behind a beautiful landscape, and so it, it turned out great, all the lovely interpretations, and that's just one of the many versions. Wonderful use of those bright colors on the top there for the roof that just like so vibrant really stand out. They do, they pop. Um, unfortunately, the lights are on, but in the dark, they glow under the black lights that we have, but it really, we have them on now just to help them pop a little bit more. And as we make our way around, we come to maybe the tallest section of the build. So this is like a large rock structure. What's happening around here? Uh, this, I called it Mer Maybe Rock. Uh, maybe mermaids live there, maybe they don't. You can see the treasure cave. Um, so, you know, all open to interpretation, use your imagination of who might live there and who might live nearby. And how did the rock structure itself uh, come together in this section? I built it in about three different sections and just because I didn't want it to be too unstable or sturdy was a great learning experience We're using a combination of brick pieces and plates so it really gives it the unique um, lifelike look um, so it's not so repetitive and just wanted to focus on a lot of different colors and textures. And some really neat kind of piece choices here for the underwater coral and some of that plant life. So what are your some of your favorites that are around that area? Uh, I had some help with bringing together ideas for the different colors and textures. I love using, they're actually called, um, I believe, voodoo balls, the little bright pink balls there in the corner, and just putting those on um, around. Someone else had come up with that idea, and I thought that's a great way to use those parts to give texture, but also to sort of have some plant life that's repeated throughout the build. And as we move to the next section, you can start to see kind of the, the base for the layout in terms of the, the style of this all coming together. So what is the, the base for all this that you kind of build on top of? Our standard for the build was using the oct octagonal plates um, in, with a four by four plate in between. We borrowed that idea and asked another um, lug who had done something similar in the past if we could borrow this theme or idea and just sort of use that as our standard and allowed everyone in our lug to build off of it on their own. It worked out really well because it allowed for um, fluid and, mo and movement, so that way it wasn't so rigid. And for an underwater build, the octagonal plates have just worked out beautifully to keep everything organic and look like an ocean floor. Oh, I think it looks fantastic. Now that brings us to another really nice section of rock work with a fun treasure chest, some gold hidden back there. Absolutely, yeah. I, one thing that I love about the uniqueness of doing an underwater build is when you kind of add play to it, like a mermaid theme, you can do so many different things. You're not structured to just one scale, so you have a giant treasure chest, yet with this tiny little shark, and it, and it works. There's so many different textures and ideas that come together, uh, and they might be different on their own, but yet when you put them together, it really looks great. This next section looks very different from some of what we've seen so far. What's happening here? Um, this is what lies beneath um, by Mark, one of our team builds. So you can see it's sort of like a ruinous um, area. And just that's what I think is great about the underwater build. Everyone interpreted their own fantasy or uh, use their imagination to make it great. A little maybe monster action or something coming up from, uh, up from the deep. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. It, not not all beautiful bright colors under the sea. 
Then we get to some of our first movement here, and this is super fun because it kind of gives that idea of the, all the different sea creatures just kind of moving through. So what are some of the different fish and creatures represented here? Uh, you see some turtles, some fish, and again, open for interpretation, you see the cute little flounder, as well as a big shark, or excuse me, a big dolphin, um, all moving around. I like the organic sort of pattern that was used to create that movement. It's not just a square or a circle to go around, so it's really catching your eye and keeping it interesting. And uh, fantastic variety of figures. We've got the skeleton diver, the ghost out here, some mermaids there. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, br bring it all here to, you know, use, like I said, your imagination. And there's so many great mini figs. Put them all in and, you know, go from there. Next, we have someone always wanted to do SpongeBob, and it looks like this was their excuse to do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I remember in a uh, chat channel, someone said, I think I might do SpongeBob. And her idea really came to life. You see it, you get it with the big flowers behind, giving a good background and depth. It's lovely. Down from there, the mermaids have set up a pe permanent residence, it looks like, with this. So it's a full, full house to live in. Absolutely. I love all the different textures and colors that she put into this. Um, it's not just a big square building. It has life and movement and, you know, all four sides are, are decorated and covered in the underwater life. The next section I think was done by Caden, which is a builder that we featured many times on Beyond the Brick. He's really into the military builds, so it looks like he got a little bit of that representation in this section. Oh, he did, and I love how he just has these small pops of color amongst the, the floor um, where the sunken ships are. So it's, it, it really draws your attention to it because it's not, so many of the others have a lot of color and things going on, but you are drawn to that just by its simplicity with these little tiny pops of color with the little um, green plants and then the little cur curvy ones. I forget what their names are, but it just it's lovely. And as we round the corner, that brings us to another colorful section. What, what is happening right here? Uh, this is just another under underwater scene interpretation um, with some organic animals that uh, she created along with the minifigs, exploration uh, sea base. Uh, I think it's a great part usage to create sort of like a building and merge both unique creat sea creatures with your minifig explorers. Once again, so many fantastic parts. You can just stare at this for so long, kind of picking apart all the different elements that were used there. Absolutely. It's uh, been fun to explore and see how everyone interpreted not just the build, but how they were going to use unique, fun parts and in different ways. And it's very inspirational. And then we come to another section with some more movement here. And this is almost, I guess, that kind of school of fish idea. Yeah, I like the movement here. Um, just all the different, again, the colors that were involved and the textures he used to create his build. Um, just so much going on both in the cave, above the cave, uh, and all around. And the greatest parts usage, of course, is always the brick separator. <laughs> yes. You never think about using the brick separator as a part, but I do love when it's, in, it's included in builds like that. Here we see some larger brick-built fish, which is super fun, and it looks like maybe a pirate ship there. What else is happening here? Just another underwater scene with a lot of movement. Uh, you have a mer mermaid riding one of those brick belt fish. Uh, maybe they're chasing or racing. So lots of different action items happening, just drawing you in to keep, keep you interested and, and thinking about what, what's happening, using your imagination. Next to that, we've got some brick built uh, larger, I guess these are like construction mermaids. <laughs> yeah, almost um, maybe like bionicle type type creatures, which I think is great. Um, and right in front or and in front of that, you have other sea movement and um, motion is, is the word I'm looking for. So it's a great way to pull everything together and draw your eye in. This builder did a fantastic job with almost like the grass type pieces down there and really packing that in looks fantastic. Thank you, absolutely, I agree. Great, great use of movement. We don't think about that sometimes when we're building about movement and texture and it looks, it's phenomenal there. 
floating above that is one of the most unique parts of the build. This is a turtle that is carrying just a tremendous amount of stuff on its back. Yeah, this, this builder um, has had this, I've seen it, he wasn't built specifically for this, but it's a great build to include in um, a larger scale like this because it uses so many fun parts and textures. It just fits perfectly in this big giant turtle just hanging out with, with all the little mini figs. Then we've got a nice uh, ship in the bottle encasement with looks like maybe like a squid piece inside there. In front of that, looks like someone actually used some video pieces. I don't think that went, was a theme that was real popular, but it was perfect for a build like this. Yeah, absolutely. The the Some of those video creatures are quite unique and work great in a build like this where you're using your imagination and putting lots of texture and color together. Is there anything happening in the pyramid type structure back there? I don't think so. I think it's just a pyramid, kind of a backdrop background for the for the mermaids and other aquatic life um, to explore. Now up front, it's more of like a Viking longship that sank here and lots of sea creatures are living in that. Plus you got some divers exploring it, which always adds some nice sense of action to it. Yeah, it does. And I love kind of the uh, little creatures that have moved into the ship. Behind that is some nice uh, rock formations as well. You might recognize some of the characters hanging around there. And then once again, we have a creature floating above it there. Lots of tentacles on that one. Yeah, it's a great parts usage to create a jellyfish and use some unique parts that you maybe wouldn't see used in, in that way. And really kind of adds height height to the build and draw your eye in and keep you looking and searching. I also love here in that foreground some fun ways to use parts like the uh, pirates hats um, just all the parts that are used in this I don't know that we'll ever be able to count them all up and then the the largest pirate ship uh, I think in, in the display here which you've got to have a large sunken pirate ship in a, in a display like this yeah it's so fun how it it was built and cracked and you can see the rock that it crashed landed on and all the sea creatures have taken over. The, the poor pirate who did not survive the crash there at the helm and all of just the plant life that has grown around it and it's now part of the ocean floor. One really unique piece that catches my eye is this one here. Do you know what that's from? I'm not sure. I've seen them, the, the iridescent balls and some of the maybe oh I forget the theme but I've seen them before in some of the underwater sets so um, it's just reused and duplicated there and it they look like they look kind of look like giant clam pearls but they're not in a clam there someone hoarded them here we have a lot of human exploration kind of a submersible there uh, finding all the treasure chests you've got to have a lot of treasure on the bottom of the sea as well Absolutely. There's lots of treasure throughout and there's that is a great sort of ruin of treasure that's being excavated and, and explored. So good luck to them. And then we get a look at the other side of the mountain that you were talking about earlier here, kind of those uh, small arched openings in it. Yeah, I created them just kind of as maybe mermaids live there, maybe they don't. Uh, they were a fun way to build and kind of create some sort of unity uh, in, in the rock structure um, with the little seashells as ledges or doorsteps. Um, it was just fun, a great learning experience. We talked about the brick separators earlier. Now you see them used to create actual underwater creatures here with those various eye tiles on them. Absolutely. And the uh, flippers, or I think they're called frogman's feet, used for the fins and hairstyles. It's a great way to use up fun, silly parts and make a great fun fish. And then this section here uses a lot of those translucent kind of orange and red and blues to create a really unique effect in there as well. Absolutely. It really pops with the color, helps with the, um, the, the black lights really pick up and make those glow and pop. We've got a little mermaid hanging out under the rock in this section as well as we get towards the end with the sunken ship. Yeah, I love the rocks used here and how it was all kind of pulled together. Just simple, but really kind of uses color and the rock in a great balance. So this whole layout is just absolutely fantastic. You said there are almost 20 builders involved here. Do you know how long this whole thing is? 
I have it measured. We can maybe do it later so you can put a little pop-up on your video. There we go, yeah, but it's it's a very impressive layout. As, as all the builders were showing up, what was the process like of kind of getting this set up? Because obviously you've got a lot of people bringing in builds here. Yeah, it was kind of um, just a slow process bringing builds together. We did plan a layout uh, once everyone knew the size of their, uh, what their would their estimated size of what it would be. And then once it was together, for the most part, we stuck to the layout. Um, there was a few extra pl uh, plates that people had brought with decoration or plant life added on it so that we could fill in and not have any gaps. And it, it just sort of made, we, once we put it all together, made sure we liked the layout. But with the fluidity of how the octagonal plates work, it allowed us to move things around if we thought that it needed to move or be placed somewhere different. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much to you and the rest of the lug here for, for all the effort that you all put into this. And I think it's been a big hit with the public, too, as they search out all these fun colors and pieces. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time and featuring us. We appreciate it.